Hello and welcome to another episode of To Be Honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. Let's start with the richest and stupidest man in the world, Elon Ma. The man is a pathological liar. This guy's as wrong as you can get. Maybe Elon's not as smart as I thought he was. Elon Musk is basically just a fascist who has spent the past several weeks unbanning neo-Nazis. It has been interesting over the years to watch you blossom from the electric car guy into a fully formed piece of shit. You should never trust Elon Musk. In the past couple years, Elon and Bill Gates, they've become increasingly divisive figures. There's a new villain of the day, and it's billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates. You know, I'm cited as some, you know, mastermind. Is because you're a criminal evil mastermind. Before there was kind of like a very high approval rating for both of them. There were a lot of just positive vibes about them. There were people who, especially with Elon, whenever there was a problem, people were basically asking him to solve it. Bill Gates did a little bit more self-appointing in that way, in a way that kind of, I think, surprised everybody. But there was a lot of positive press for both of them. Are you sincerely trying to save the world? Well, I'm trying to do good things, yeah. And recently, I think people are split into pretty evenly divided camps about both of them. Whenever people talk about Bill Gates, it's usually as a kind of a sort of megalomaniacal tyrant or as the savior of the world. Seems a little bit like either superhero or supervillain. You have to choose one. I spent a couple hours today thinking about in what ways are the two of them the same and in what ways are they different? Because they don't get along, for one thing. Gates said something about me not knowing what, what I was doing. It's like, hey, knucklehead. We actually make the vaccine machines for CureVac, that company you're invested in. I wanted to go through that exercise. So like, I have five things that Bill Gates has done in the past couple of years that have made people distrust him. And for Elon Musk, I have five things he's done in the past two weeks <laughs> that make people lose yeah. trust in him. And the first thing is this verified badge. So verified's the wrong word for it. If you're self-certifying that that's you, that's not verification. Like there's no verification being done at all. So it didn't make sense. I like the idea of him spinning up like more verifications and him maybe let's say loosening the procedure for getting a check mark. There's a lot of different ways you can do that and none of them would be just pay and, and ask. He just tweeted this 30 seconds ago, by the way, about the verification <laughs> thing. Holding off relaunch of blue verified until there's a high confidence of stopping impersonation. We'll probably use different color check. I gave him that. I gave him that idea. I gave him that idea. I gave him that idea. I want Twitter stock now. I want half of Twitter stock. There's a lot of different ways you can handle verification that is different than what Twitter was doing and that wouldn't involve just like uploading your ID. You can add the link to your, to your at in another verified account, or you can put it on a domain that clearly is the main website, or you can put it in the bio, you can put it in the description of a YouTube video. Those have been methods for verifying that you own the account for other platforms. Discord does that, eh? Yeah, you can use the API of another website. So, so you log in through like an eye window or whatever to something else, and then it proves like, okay, well you have this account that we know, it's got millions of followers, we know that's probably you. I mean, that would filter a lot of people. Even though he's saying like, you know, bring in a different color check mark, then people are gonna be colorblind and not be able to tell the difference either. It's just like, ugh. You know, they're losing like $4 million a day at the minute. They are literally hemorrhaging money. Like, like it could be, he's, he's emailed people that are left at Twitter and he's talked about the possible chance of bankruptcy. It will take him years to even like see any kind of profit from buying Twitter. It's probably the worst investment he's ever made. He tweeted saying that the only reason he bought, because remember how he was going to do the deal and then he backed out because like there were more spam accounts than what Twitter said. Twitter said it was like, I think Elon's team found it was like 5% of accounts. Uh, it's more like five zero to be fair. But uh, And then they tried to sue him when he tried to back out of the deal. And then he bought Twitter only on the inclination that they dropped the lawsuit, which they did for the original offer. But then he tweeted saying like, the only reason I bought Twitter is to accelerate. Apparently he's got an app he's working on called X or something. And it's meant to be every single social media ever housed under one roof. Like, like he apparently genuinely thinks he can control everything. Like like every kind of social it's just so bizarre. Like, like, I, I literally read that tweet and I was like, okay, you were up at four in the morning and you watched one episode of Black Mirror and you went, this is literally me. I feel like Elon is the type, say someone insulted him on Twitter and said like, you will never buy Twitter. He's the type to buy it just to prove this random guy with like 10 followers wrong. 
I've always got that vibe from her. Before to get verified on Twitter, it wasn't even just like how many followers or how popular you were. Yeah, it, it's always been useless. It was literally reserved for YouTubers that had a manager that knew someone at Twitter or like a food blogger with like three followers that also knew someone at Twitter. It was tied to advertising. They were trying to bribe companies to advertise on Twitter. So like it was a, um, when you got a manager, like your ad salesman, they would verify the people who worked for your company. So that's how a lot of like media companies got ticks. It, w it wasn't so much that Twitter valued journalists. It was that they were trying to get these newspapers and, and outlets to buy ads. Some of the MCNs that got all of their YouTubers, or at least the, you know, their favorite clients verified, they were experimenting with running ads and doing promoted posts and things like that. So once they disabled it or they paused verification, it was still something that everybody wanted and needed because there were advantages to it and it looked bad to not have the tick. So when they realized, oh, this is a value that, that we can lure people into um, paying for one of our services for, they just, they did it that way. And there was definitely algorithmic benefit to having the check mark. It wasn't just like a mark of fucking pride. Protected accounts too. You have a higher threshold of reports before a human looks at it if you have a tick mark. Whereas um, if, you, if you don't, you're vulnerable to false flagging. If there are a bunch of accounts impersonating you, you could have created these accounts yourself. But if there's a bunch of them and you report them... I think that's how Dolan got verified. Is it? Uh, no, I got banned because I had that I was 12 years old in my bio. <laughs> and Twitter took it. And, <laughs> That's right. And Twitter, Twitter took it seriously. And then when they were helping me get my account back, the guy was like, "Hey, you know what? We can verify you, so it doesn't happen again." Like that was That's the right. only way I got verified. I just love to imagine you with the little like the little duck picture as well, just being like, "Yeah, I'm 12." <laughs> Banned instantly. <laughs> it's like someone's dad just gave their kid a Twitter. It seems like a simple fix. Like I felt like all Elon had to do was something like that and just hire more people to, you know, double check who's applying for verification, but instead it just becomes this fucking free-for-all where you just have to pay $8 and every scammer in the world can now has access to verification. Yeah, here's what I think happened. He directed a team of developers. He said, you have two weeks to get the verification system sorted out or you're fired. And they came back in two days and they were like, we're done. <laughs> and he was like, oh. And I think maybe his expectation was that they would set up some sort of screening process in the middle. Like you still would have to attest that it was you by linking to another account or linking to an article or whatever. Like I think he wanted a them to just basically turn that back on and make it streamlined and do it in a smart way. And what they did is they just basically turned it on so anyone could get it. I wonder if he knew that that's what they were gonna do. And because it really does make him seem stupid. Fucking Twitch had the same setup as that, where it was like, you need to do, stream X amount of hours, but like more importantly, have a certain amount of followers. And then I, I hit the guidelines with that and they just still kept putting me to the bottom of the, uh, the waiting list every single time. There's a moral hazard on that follower thing because according to them, you're not supposed to really prioritize followers like that. So that would make everybody care about growing their account. So you would see an increase in botting and you would see an increase in behavior asking for follows, follow for follow schemes, and people just trying to do things that would get them more followers because they'd try to get the tip. Sure. And Twitter's been trying to go in the opposite direction where they're trying to make influencers like less important. They literally shrank the font of followers and they moved it somewhere different to try to make people not look at it first. But that's the first thing I look at though, when I go into someone's Twitter account. Yeah. It, it's so weird how you can kind of be influenced by numbers though right it's like I, i've seen so many memes on tiktok and stuff where it's like you know someone will see a post that they found funny but then they'll see how it only has like you know 200 likes not like 200,000, and then they'll be like wait this isn't funny it's so weird how numbers can I'm almost wrong. dictate <laughs> shit like that yeah, i'm wrong yeah that's why our videos is such uh the first 10 comments or upvotes are like what decides everything because the momentum one way or the other is what everyone adopts as their opinion pretty sure that's with everything yeah i think that's one of the reasons why youtube wanted to well why i thought it was dangerous for them to turn off the like to dislike ratio is it like people do rely on that to tell them whether they should have their guard up but okay so the verified badge sold for eight dollars self-certification is not verification he should have either spun up a team outsource people to look at ids or look at links or whatever he used the wrong word there it didn't make any sense 
But then combining that move with saying that Twitter is going to democratize journalism and be the most accurate source of info on the web, like that, if that's his goal, that did not align with the first thing, which is which he just created like this massive swarm of parody accounts <laughs> that were causing confusion. Did you see how some of the stocks of companies might have actually been lost because of that? Some of the stocks might have crashed. Yeah, insulin's free. Yeah, they were saying insulin is free and the company went down 5%. Apparently, it might <laughs> not be the case. It was some other drug that was unrelated to like the tweet that like went down for that company. So third big mistake he made in the last two weeks was endorsing Republicans in the midterm election. As much as like he can say, I'm a centrist, and he had a fancy explanation for why he thought everyone should vote Republican, you know, that that he believes in the sharing of power and because... Democrats controlled both branches of Congress and the presidency. He wanted there to be some breaks on that. He still was picking a side. And to the people who are ideologically left, what he's saying there is you're trying, you want to take power away from me. Like I have it and you think I shouldn't have so much. Like what's wrong with what I'm doing? So, so he presented himself as, as an enemy there. And I think those, those people who uh, politics is really important to them and where they're, it's a team sport, they're never going to forget that he did that. It's completely inappropriate. Yeah. But how, and how is that even responsible when you have a platform it's like Twitter, which is perhaps the most influential social media platform in the world? And it also, it undermines this message that it almost to them will seem hypocritical, like no matter what he says. That is a complete, by the way, contradiction of what he tweeted just a few months ago when he wrote, quote, for Twitter to deserve public trust, it must be politically neutral. If he's coming in saying things need to be fair and apolitical, it, things had been leaning too far to the left and we need to bring it back balanced or whatever, the fact that he threw his weight and tried to influence his followers to go vote Republicans, that showed that like he is willing to be partisan regardless of the reason right so like people will never forget that he picked that side it now seems like twitter's like a right-wing app and they were already saying that because of who he was you know because of the narrative that that he'd been espousing that like twitter had banned too many people on the right and that it, it had leaned too far left so people obviously were saying well okay so now you're trying to make it a right-wing app then you're trying to make it parlor i don't think he is but that was a big mistake to do that because now he's made a very strong argument that that's the case, right? Stupid thing he did, number four. Promising that he was going to create a panel of diverse voices that were going to debate every moderation decision before he reinstated any account. And then going ahead and just randomly, well, seemingly randomly reinstating some people, giving no explanation why and then putting Trump to a popular vote. So he switched from a panel of diverse voices to a vote of uh, moderation by popularity contest. So while there are diverse voices in the, what was it, 15 million people that voted, he didn't do exactly what he said he would do. And even though the public is made up of all types of people, and I think the public will was probably something like what we saw in the vote, you know, barely in favor of letting him back on to the people who were hoping that he was going to form this panel, that he was going to listen to arguments against it and really think about it. He didn't do that. So that's a broken promise. That was a mistake. I think even if um, Trump had lost that poll, I think he would have brought him back anyway and just said leftist bots were voting no. Because there's that reply where just because there was an uptick in people voting no, they just call it a bot attack. When the reality is the news would have just got around. People were voting to bring Trump back, so they're voting no. So I feel like Elon would have been the type just to just bring him back regardless of the results of the poll. I do think it was probably a foregone conclusion. He was just trying to time it right. He had so many different problems happening at the same time. I think he just tried to time it out. I feel like if he had actually used the results of the poll, you know, if, if it was voted no, and he was like, okay, I won't bring him back then. I feel like that would have been way worse. He had expressed, because I mean, when he did that interview with the Babylon Bee, I could have sworn he said something like, he thought it was like frightening and an overreach of power that social media apps had banned the president. I think he, I think he'd already come out against the banning. So I guess it's a fair opinion to have. A fifth stupid thing he did in the past two weeks. He probably overplayed his hand. 
knowing that the economy is taking a, a downturn and that layoffs are happening throughout the sector, I think he thought, well, now's the moment to make all of the cuts at once and people are going to be afraid for their jobs and I can really, you know, make sure that we keep only the people I want to and uh, cut the fat. But it might turn out to be a stroke of genius that he he went this hard and he did it in a way where the kind of people who want to work in that environment will be attracted to it in sort of like a contrarian way. But I think a lot of people from Silicon Valley and big tech, I mean, I've seen conversations in, in group chats and discord servers and DMs where they're they're like, no one's ever going to want to work in an environment like this. Like, oh, he's completely ruining the app. He's ruining his reputation. And they're, they're like happy when someone quits and they're sharing the threads. And so like the average tech worker from what I'm seeing is very against the way he's treating current employees of Twitter. This is probably up for debate, but for at least half of the people, for the camp that hates Elon Musk, that was a mistake too. He sent out a company-wide email that said, we're going to be building Twitter into Twitter 2.0 and we're going to basically be requiring super long hours and having to be really hardcore about it. So if you're willing to go into hardcore mode, press yes. And if you don't, you get three months severance. So it was like, press okay or you're fired. And then only 25% of employees press yes. So that was a mess. And probably most of them were reluctantly pushing it anyway because they don't want to lose their source of income. <laughs> they, they might even be moving over to uh, the way China works with a lot of their workforce. They do, it's called 996, where it's like they'll work 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week, which just sounds like hell. But I feel like your company would do worse if you're forcing people to work that much. It worked for Tesla, but he led by example and was like sleeping on the factory floor on a cot. So everyone saw him as they came in and left that he was at work and he does work his ass off and he expects people to be workaholics too but they do that you know people are willing to sacrifice that for something that they believe in for a promise of uh remuneration are they getting a raise are they getting stock options or is it just not get fired because then it's basically he's trying to motivate them to become a hardcore believer in the mission without there being clearly defined uh, mission or a reward for doing it, right? So like, it, th I think that was pretty poor motivation. He was using fear to motivate people. The reward actually here, the only reward mentioned is uh, the severance. It kind of looks like he <laughs> wants to cut even more people. Yeah, was he, he wasn't promising more money. I'm guessing if you're working more hours, you'd be getting more money, but. Hey, uh, Oliver. Yeah. My, my balls really itch. Have you got anything for that? Uh, no, we're not doing that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not please that. keep it in please please oh, please, please, please fine we'll fucking that's okay cinema. yeah that's, that's the cinema. segue into the <laughs> ad read <laughs> it's so good man colossal cool. don't you do you have a you have a razor with a flashlight on it that you can lend to pyro i guess like pack it up and mail it i don't know what he's asking i don't know i don't know what he's asking do you shave your pubes pyro i do actually do you use manscaped i do i do use do manscaped. you yeah i do it even comes with a little towel to wipe your ass with. I've actually got it in my hand right now. Not because I'm using it, but uh, let me turn it on. Let me prove it. I got it. There we go. He's been holding yeah. it the whole podcast. It's his time to shine. He's been waiting for this like, moment. Uh, yeah, I just turn it on and uh, I sit on it as it vibrates until the battery slowly drains. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're referencing as well, you piece of shit. <laughs> This sad read sucks. It's about to suck even more because I've got to read this. <laughs> and it's one of the can't. worst things I've ever read. We <laughs> you cannot actually put that in. It's never too early to play holiday music. And it's never too early to start thinking about gifts. Whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants. You can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> Santa cares about his sack and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and use code 
TBH for free shipping and 20% off. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything needed to help you deck the halls from face to balls just in time for <laughs> mistletoe season. The Platinum Package has each product from the best-selling Performance Package every plus every we do Ultra just gonna Premium this? Trademark Body Wash ultra premium trademark two-in-one shampoo plus conditioner and ultra premium deodorant it's the best way to smell fresh from your santa hat to your candy cane the lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and the weed whacker <laughs> nose and ear hair trimmer feature proprietary advanced oh skin safe my. trademark technology to protect your delicate presence plus both the water Waterproof, so there's no issue clearing the snow out of your driveway. There's also a 400,000 <laughs> LED light on it, so you can light the way like Rudolph. Uh, the, now that you've groomed candy <laughs> Who wrote cane, these analogies, it's time man? to make sure you don't smell like a reindeer with the Platinum <laughs> Packager shower products. All of Manscaped shower gear is sulfate-free, <laughs> vegan, yeah. and made to have your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh, but smelling good doesn't stop are her other, the shower. Are the other products like preserve a trademark yeah, ball deodorant <laughs> and crop reviver trademark and ball toner can solve stank problems all day long. Dairy Once they touch your sack, to, uh, you'll never go back. Wet my the candy cane or whatever the fucking pun was. I don't know if sitting he's, under the tree yet? is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit, and for the perfect stocking stuffer add in the brand new body buffer an incredible I feel like I'm at a rally or something right now that makes exfoliating easy and a lot cleaner than that old loofah <laughs> i like how his voice is destroyed from playing cupheads i have uh, this is the go this is the go thank you for that uh, uh, well, how much was that? Well, 25. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code TBH MANSCAPED. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. I could tell your voice was just annihilated. I think the weirdest part of this is the premise that you would give it to someone as a gift. Can you imagine that? Like the hint you'd be giving someone? The product itself is actually good though, dude, right? Like they, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the product is no, good. Fact, it's uh, just the ad reads are not good. That was literally written by someone working at Reddit. <laughs> I thought, I think they thought that this was the most hilarious thing ever. I bet you it's even like one more step removed from a person's creativity. They probably Googled like Christmas puns and then found a blog that had a list of a hundred Christmas puns that was written by like an Indian from what, what does it mean? Like some of the puns don't even make sense. The best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat to your candy cane. Like what? We got to separate off the um, the company that wrote this copy that's like running the ad campaign from the actual product itself. So they're different people. I don't think Manscaped wrote this garbage for us. What I would say about Manscaped is like, it is a good product and it's a good functional razor. And it's, it's the same price, roughly the same price as the comparable one that you would get on Amazon. But this one comes in like pretty nice package. Like it presents really well. It's got a few other pieces of bathroom hygiene and paraphernalia. I don't particularly use, uh, I don't use uh, butt wipes. I threw those right in the trash. Yeah, don't throw them down the bog because you end up like Keemstar. <laughs> <laughs> right, just <laughs> destroying the local sewer system. If it even gets down. Keemstar is the prime purchaser of this. Well, he doesn't need it for his fucking hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He doesn't need it for his hair, but he's got that underage girlfriend now, so he probably wants to look good for her. <laughs> we can't, don't put an underage girlfriend in the air. <laughs> just to clarify, like, she's not underage. She's under his age. Under his age a lot. <laughs> oh, man. That would be a funny um, qualification in, like, a defamation suit. No, I meant he was under his age. Capital his... letters underlined a lot. <laughs> but, yeah, Keemstar is the perfect customer for this. Well, here's the most real testimonial I can give. If I go looking for this thing... There's a 50% chance it's not where I left it because uh, Nikki will borrow it. It's often in the other bathroom. So. Oh, you're sharing it? You're sharing it? Yeah. It's called Manscaped, <laughs> yeah. not Womanscaped. Come on. They should do a spinoff <laughs> just called Themscapes. Eh? <laughs> uh, eh? Uh, I'm funny.
I'm funny. All right, so we went through the five stupid things Elon did in the past couple of weeks. Now let's go through Bill Gates. So if we're if we're figuring out like who the bigger supervillain is, I did some reflecting today and some research on why people think Bill Gates is a supervillain. And there were some things I'd heard that turned out to be not true. There were some things that I assumed were not true that surprised me were true <laughs> are kind of concerning. Okay. But I started to, um, you know, I did a lot of fact checking. But first, it's just like, here are some things that he did say that have caused people to distrust him. So whether you want to call them like gaffes or reveals of his intention, whatever your view is, these are things that are like on video or provable that that Bill Gates did that I think are, you know, he, he probably would wish he could take them back. Bill Gates said uh, about the Omicron virus, sadly, it's causing people to get natural immunity and it's giving people natural immunity before they can get vaccinated. So a lot of people got their ears perked up at that. They're like, why would you say sadly? Shouldn't that be like, thank God that natural immunity is the result of infection? You know, sadly, the virus itself, particularly the, the variant called Omicron, uh, is a type of vaccine. That is, it creates both B cell and T cell immunity. And it's done a better job of getting out to the world population uh, than we have with vaccines. No, you're not meant to be immune. I'm meant to save everyone. Yeah. I, no. You've probably seen it too, the tweets about turning poop into perfume and water. It's like him sniffing fucking fecal matter. And it's just like... <laughs> Just huffing Jenkum in a lab and he looks so satisfied. Such a like rich person thing, hey, to just to be sniffing perfume made of shit. Is that tube connected to his ass? <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> there's just off screen, there's off screen there's this fat dude with a pipe in his ass. I can't believe he tweeted that, picked that photo and phrased it that way. What like why is it two angles of him huffing farts? <laughs> Can you help me figure out what I'm going to say? Yeah, we should work on it together. A lot of them struggle with authentic human behavior. Obviously, Mark Zuckerberg is kind of the greatest example of this, where he his, uh, yeah. his arm motions don't seem human. So people compare him to a robot or a lizard or whatever, and they're, they're always looking for evidence of him not being a human, and there's quite a bit of it. But it is going to bother you because you're human, and, and I was human. I am human, still. This is going to be very triggering, but like there's, you know, a correlation with extreme intelligence also, unfortunately, going hand in hand with being somewhere on the on the spectrum, whether it's Asperger's or autism, having some, you know, disorder. And the, the an extreme example of it would be, you know, people who sometimes people who suffer from debilitating autism will be mathematical geniuses like Rain Man. Right. So they'll have like an extraordinary ability so with extraordinary abilities, particularly high IQ, charisma doesn't always come hand in hand with that. It's very rare. So Elon's dancing and the thing he does with his shoulders where he's trying to keep himself loose. Bill Gates does a thing where he shoves his hands into his armpits to keep his hands from waving too far out when he talks. And then Zuckerberg obviously is like robotically doing what he'd been told to do from like public speaking courses. So you can see that all of them have these like mechanics that they try to do to be a persuasive public speaker or to be engaging and it it's a little odd. I mean, we got to be excited about the future. We got to do things that make us want to live. You know, it cannot always be about problems every day. <laughs> this region has so much water. <laughs> Look around you. <laughs> I agree with the autism thing on how like, you know, some people with it can, you know, almost become savants and particular areas because usually it comes from like a hyper fixation or something but i genuinely think like it is just so many kids that grew up with tech and they were just so socially introvert and they got really rich really quickly because that's the background of all these people right it's, it's it's tech they're not like you know they're not like influencers or like you know uh youtubers or like boxers or anything like that these are literally just like nerdy people that got incredibly incredibly rich well zuckerberg invented the tech that everyone got got on and bill gates has invented um i mean he was early to operating systems so he was very early into home computers and then um elon musk was goes all the way back to the formation of paypal so they didn't i think they all grew up pre like internet social circles i don't know we probably will be seeing an epidemic of like 
poorly of like internet socialized people that might even be worse off than Zuckerberg. Who knows? Stereotype of the absent-minded professor, the someone who's so lost in their specialty that they are like walking into potholes or they can't tie their shoes. So like where one area of their life or their, their aptitudes is excellent or like 99.999th percentile of, of, uh, of ability, the, the other parts of the skill tree are <laughs> nerfed. So these two guys and three, if you include Zuckerberg, they all unfortunately reveal maybe more than they even intend to in some of their awkward communication, their, their attempts to behave normally and to make you think what they want you to think. Sometimes it's so transparent that they're trying to make you think something that that makes them seem untrustworthy. And I think, I think Bill Gates suffers from that, not as much as Mark Zuckerberg, but there are definitely a lot of gaffes he's made or awkward irrelevant things he said that are kind of the last worst thing he should have said and he doesn't play it off well. We're taking things that are, you know, genetically modified organisms and we're injecting them in the little kids' arms. We just shoot them right into the vein. So, yeah, I think maybe we should have a safety system where we, you know, do trials and test things out. On this list, there's a few of those. So w one of them was saying sadly for Omicron. Whatever he meant by that, that was a word that really that people found inappropriate. The second thing on the list is the very awkward reaction he had to a journalist asking him about Jeffrey Epstein. It was a softball question in an interview that was otherwise about the Gates Foundation. The journalist said, in hindsight, what are some things that you've learned from this experience? And that's an easy question. There's a lot of ways you could answer that. You could say something like, well... Well, I've learned that, uh, you know, not to be so trusting. I've learned that, um, that some people will have ulterior motives and use science to hide what they're really trying to do. There, there were a lot of ways he could have answered that. I should basically do a background check on people or once they've been arrested for child trafficking, maybe I shouldn't try to do fundraising or go to dinners at their house anymore. There were a lot of ways he could have answered that that, that would have been in sync with the question itself. But what he said was, well, he's dead. So, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, and what that sounded like to everybody was that Epstein's the one who learned his lesson. Like it wasn't what lesson have I learned from this? It was like, well, don't do what he did. Right. So it was like he completely skipped the opportunity for accountability and he goes straight to he got what was coming to him. Don't mess with me. That's the way it came across in the flight log. So this was one of the things that um, that there is misinformation about, but it's not total misinformation. So he was in the flight logs once he flew from New York to Tampa on Epstein's Lolita Express. There weren't 17 trips to the island. What was it called? Lolita Express. That was the that was the nickname. Yep. <laughs> the plane just has the little pedo bear drawn on the side of it. Just child porn on the wings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's move on. <laughs> Get. <laughs> I like how there's just no subtlety. Like Oliver will literally just say the most horrible, depraved thing you can imagine, just straight up. No, no sugar coating, by the way. All right, number number three on the list during his TED talk. He said a rather unfortunate phrase that in light of him making healthcare services, people took to mean that he wanted everyone on the planet to die. He basically showed a, a formula for how we get to a net zero emissions. His formula for how to get to net zero included population times services. And he goes, uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Now uh, that's back from high school algebra, but let's, let's take a look. And everybody laughed because that implied either people stop buying things and eating food or everybody dies. So a lot, a lot of people have played that clip since then and been like, this is not what I want uh, someone who I'm trusting my life with to be joking about, right? It's kind of like, you should never joke about that if we're trusting our healthcare. To someone you don't want your doctor being like uh well i'd have a you know i'd be able to golf more if you were dead so um i yeah. don't know you either come out of the you either come out of this or you don't whatever i actually kind of hope that you die because i'd like to golf more or whatever you know like it was it was an inappropriate joke he also said uh first we've got population 
Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15%. So people took that to mean, well, the vaccines are going to reduce the population? And he did mean that. So, like, what he wasn't saying was that the vaccines themselves are, were going to cause infertility or that the vaccines were going to kill people. What he meant was if mothers are less worried that their children are going to die, then they have less kids. What we found out is that as health improves, families choose to have less children. And this effect is very, very dramatic population growth goes down as we improve health. So ultimately, Bill Gates is trying to reduce the population of Earth through vaccines, but not in the way that people, you know, jump to conclusions. And what the developing world does not need is more children. Hmm. And I think that was the biggest aha to Bill and me when we got into this work, is we asked ourselves, of course, the same hard-nosed question you'd ask, which is, if you get into this work and you start to save these children, will women just keep overpopulating the world? And thank goodness the converse is absolutely true. Honestly, like if you wanted to reduce the population of Earth, just make more video games and make them more accessible and cheaper. <laughs> you know, there's a whole like sect of Japan, which are just like closeted. They stay in their apartments. They just don't go outside. So of course they're not reproducing. Oh, well, not even that. They just, they literally just live in internet cafes. So give lots of video games to like the little Africans, instead of giving them water and shit, you know, instead of fixing the wells, just, just give them like God of War, give them God of War Ragnarok, give them a free PlayStation 5. You know, the Snoy is not selling very well, so <laughs> everyone should just give them a fucking Snoy. <laughs> No, you, you, you'll give them the console and they'll be like, I don't get it, it's got no games. It's got God of War Ragnarok, so you, <laughs> they could play that for a bit. You are right, the next generation, like statistically, is having less sex than the previous ones. They're you know, there's an unlimited supply of erotic content. They're getting their social experiences through the internet. Yeah, so they're not going outside, they're not interacting with real people, and therefore they're not copulating. Oh, I thought you meant, like, set them up so that their idea of sex is so disconnected. You're thinking of, like, children. I'm not saying give the games to the kids. It's not the kids having sex, unless Pyro is involved. But, like, no, it's just <laughs> literally the adults. He cut out for a second. Did he make a fucking grooming joke again? Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, definitely did. Speaking of Bill Gates, he donated a bunch of mosquito nets to Africa, some place in Africa, right? And they just used them for fishing. Well, they were probably made out of poop, so... <laughs> I, I genuinely feel the tightrope we're walking on with this episode. Another recent, another recent uh, unfortunate admission of his was that he is seeing that the press is making it seem like the weather is getting more extreme and that that's caused by climate change and that that people are becoming more and more convinced that every dangerous weather event locally is caused by climate change. And he knows that that's, that that's not the case, but he says that's basically a useful piece of misinformation, that it's not quite true, but it's good for people to think that. I don't think he should have said that. It gives the game away a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Just make your computers, make your computers, make your shit water and shut up. I just imagine this scene of Oliver going up to the third richest man in the world be like, Yeah, with your, with your poop water, shut up, <laughs> know your place. These rich fuckers, all these rich fuckers, they made all the money, they don't know what to do with themselves now. I mean, most people are stuck in that cycle of trying to make ends meet, right? Like, like rent, mortgage, that kind of stuff. But yeah, once you make that insane amount of money where you could basically start a new fucking country it's just yeah like kind of what do you do then probably why jeffrey epstein became a pedo right he's like i just want to try something new yeah I <laughs> can we go like five minutes five minutes <laughs> i don't think that's the reason all right so uh, so the last thing i have now there's more gaffes than this but the uh, the last thing on the list because i'm just trying to keep it to about five that bill gates is the largest owner of farmland in the united states that he's been buying up farms. I think I figured out why he's doing it, by the way, today. And I, no, one, no one told me this, but I think I've put, it, put the pieces together. He's buying up the farmland. Now, a lot of people, I know that they were assuming that he's buying up the farmland in order to do like tech agriculture, where he's going to do vertical farming, and maybe he's going to sell lettuce that's made in a warehouse, you know, with eight stories of robot sprayed lettuce. But I think what he's trying to do is buy up the farmland so that nobody grows food on it. And 
But you might think, well, he's not going to make any money doing that and everything. If he's not growing food on the farm, no one else can, and that's less calories to go around, and that means less people. I, I would have thought he was buying up all the farmland so he owns the majority when everything goes to shit. Because you know the theory how, like, you know, global warming can get so bad that, you know, there'll just be, like, mass migration to northern countries? Mm -hmm. Because the southern countries will just become literally too hot to even, like, grow anything. I, see, I thought it was probably, like, a futurist play like that. Um, I assumed it was probably that he was going to get into providing food himself. But it is a futurist play. But it's for, it's for something that a lot of people haven't, hasn't gotten on their radar yet. He'll get paid to not grow food through a new financial instrument called a NAC. So this is a new type of listing that the New York Stock Exchange has partnered with the Rockefeller Foundation and um, a South American banking conglomerate to allow the listing of natural assets. So what we're talking about there is air, we're talking about water, we're talking about naturally renewing resources that otherwise were belong to the commons. Economists estimate the value of these ecosystem services at more than $100 trillion per year. And yet, they have been largely invisible to the financial system. Until now. It's going to allow a country to basically create an NFT out of a large plot of land, let's say a national park, and then do an IPO where money is raised for people to buy shares of that natural resource. So now you're going to have like BlackRock becoming part owner the retail investors could buy it. Companies that want to signal where their priorities are buy part of that resource. And the shareholders will find ways to monetize that asset. So basically what you're, you're going to be enticing developing countries into selling their resources to Wall Street. And that will then eliminate the local population from using those resources. In principle, it seems to have noble aims. If a farmer can sell his land then instead of feeling like he has to grow food on it in an ecologically damaging way in order to make a living, now he can basically be paid to grow clover instead. And then the clover will be trapping carbon into the soil. I kind of have a bad feeling about it. It's kind of like the next version of colonialism where you've got outside powers uh, exploiting the resources of a, of a resource-rich country. So one of the main, like, uh, the criticisms of this is that is that Bill Gates and other people like him, other people aligned with him, are saying that we need to have carbon taxes, that we basically need to make it so expensive for industry to pollute, they have to buy carbon offsets. The way they could do that is through the companies having to pay for the natural resource as an offset to the shareholders of one of these companies. So basically, like, you know, you're polluting the air, now you pay whoever bought up all this farmland to grow clover on it. And while that simultaneously is, is uh, keeping a farmer from growing food on it, it also is a perpetual money machine for hedge funds. And that's probably, I think that's a pretty reasonable fear. Because what, what the elites and bankers and Rockefeller types and Rothschilds what these like massive money Larry Finks of the world, what they're looking for is perpetual money machines. They want to issue the currency that's used by a developing nation and then be paid seniorage on it. Or they want um, to be the Federal Reserve and be in charge of issuing the currency of a country. And then they're just rich forever because they control the monetary supply. I will say this, I have a great idea. Oh God, here we go. No, 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 this is actually smart. This is smart. Okay, <laughs> so there's this place in South America. I think it's in either Chile or Argentina. Argentina, how do you say that? And Argentina. there's like a storm there and you can predict this storm that occurs there like every two weeks, every fortnight or something like that. This storm produces like massive amounts of energy. So you're harnessing the elements to create to create power. So you capture the electricity from a thunderstrike into a battery, I imagine, right? The battery would probably explode. No, it's a big battery, <laughs> a big battery. <laughs> you mean a big lightning rod, I think. Like a skyscraper-sized battery, imagine. And then that skyscraper-sized battery is going to charge the entire country. I think that's an idea, like, why don't we nuke hurricanes, where it's like, well... Now you're still going to have a hurricane, but it'll be radioactive. I think it's like 
you're still going to get an exploding battery, but the battery will have way larger explosion. No, it's not going to explode. We can harness the energy from the wind. We can harness the energy from the sun. Why can't we harness it from a thunderstorm? So I typed, can we harness, and it says the power of lightning. So this is something that people do think about. No existing battery could survive this onslaught. Batteries need to charge up more slowly. <laughs> then even if we could design a battery that would not be vaporized by the strike, all the lightning in the world would still power only a small fraction of households. We'd have to invent some tech that doesn't exist yet, but uh, <laughs> I, I like the idea. I mean, because you can charge up, um, like when you rub your pajamas together, you can build up a static charge and you can pass it on to something else. So like- Why don't we just like get a bunch it? of people in pajamas running around and- A pajama, their big energy. pajama party battery everyone yeah, holds hands exactly. it disperses the lightning strike into this massive pajama party and then and then i guess like periodically when someone needs power like one person points puts their finger out like et and just touches <laughs> something and charges it up very slowly it's i just don't think it's worth it because from what i can see is you Why? need multiple you need multiple strikes of lightning, right? Just to power one household for a month. I don't believe that. Well, <laughs> you don't have to believe it. <laughs> well, I mean, fucking half the, most of the energy of lightning is just going from the fucking heat dispersal from when it fucking strikes as well. You're losing all that energy. I, I feel like we're going into troll science bit now. You know the troll <laughs> science, that, that comic strip where it was just yeah. like, you know, getting energy from completely garbage means. Get, get a magnet, put it we're, yeah, we're just like losing car. subscribers by the second. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Back now uh, on your car. If you drop like a brick from a skyscraper, <laughs> you harness the energy from when the brick drops. Why do we have a phone when we could just scream into a jar, put the lid on and mail it to someone and they could open it and listen? The, the, this is how Oliver thinks it actually works, by the way, with gravity. <laughs> Look at that me. <laughs> Tired of slow internet, rotate your monitor like this. Gravity will make downloads faster. <laughs> I don't think that makes any sense. No, it does. It <laughs> yeah, does. but dropping a brick and harnessing the energy <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> I just like, I like how you've got, you've got wind turbines, right? And like Oliver's alternative would literally just be like dropping brick on a string and then pulling it back up just to drop the brick again over and over. I am not joking. There is a troll science comic strip about brick. I'm not even joking. Put rubber band on home and car. Go to job. Put brick. Return home fast. Have much money and <laughs> I don't even understand. What? Oh, right, right, right. Because like the rubber band, it's elastic. So it like... <laughs> I like how you decipher it first because you're the one who's like shilling the brick. You know that thing which has like silver balls on like a string? You hit one and they all move and it keeps going ad infinitum, like forever. So why don't you just make like a really big one of those? Because those slow down. Those are just machines that have as little friction as possible. Yeah, but it keeps going for a very long time. So harness the energy from that. Because as soon but as you, you start can't. to harvest the energy, you're the friction that stops it. The only reason that those go for a while is there's no nothing in between. Colossal, if you harness the energy from it, there is the balls won't bounce because it's the opposite and equal reaction, right? As soon as you're taking that reaction, the balls stop bouncing. <laughs> You just need to give like a disclaimer before this episode. Just say like Oliver mixed up his meds or something. Like he's just not speaking coherently. Literally just saying brick will <laughs> fix the energy crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, it's, I think it's perfect. I mean, this is basically how disconnected the uh, WF policies are from reality. Like they are causing ruin and they don't make sense when applied locally. All right. So next segment comparing um, how are Elon Musk and Bill Gates the same and how are they different? Before you do your bit, I, I definitely think Elon tries to be like the cool kids at school more like how do you do fellow kids and i think kind of it's almost like maybe bill gates kind of knows his place a little bit more i think because you don't really see him doing the whole like you know fucking trying to ratio people and shit oh he did dab once well that brings up actually number five on my list so i'll just skip to that one their sense of humor yeah so he, both he of overdid them that dab so much man fuck me <laughs> it's, both bill it's gates like a and elon musk have set off alarm bells for me with what they think is funny. The economy is not going to be anything like uh, it was. It's going to take a long time to recover. It's going to be, you know, people... Do you guys remember when Elon was on uh, PewDiePie's meme review? Do you remember what he laughed the hardest at? The dead deer. The drowned deer. That was the funniest thing. Well, I know you're a, a psychopath, but 
to me, that was the only thing that I wouldn't laugh at is a drowned baby animal. This <laughs> 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 colossal was laughing his ass yeah. off a drowned baby animal. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's animal cruelty to me. His reaction was the funniest part to me in that. Like, him laughing so hard at a dead animal was the funniest thing to me. It was the only notable part of that episode. uh, Because, like, all the memes that he got sent, none of them were funny, to be fair. But then Elon laughing that hard at that. Help, my dolphin's broken. And it was a drowned deer on the bottom of a pool. I don't think he even read the caption. He just laughed at the fact that there was a dead drowned deer, right? Like, I think that's literally what he laughed at. Imagine you go out in your yard and that's your pool. And there, there's a, a beautiful baby deer dead in the bottom of the pool. Would you laugh at that? Yeah. <laughs> Colossal. Are you serious? What a stupid deer. <laughs> <laughs> Just Im- imagining, like, the terror of a baby animal that accidentally stumbled into something, into a death trap, and, and was thrashing around, couldn't swim, and then succumbed and died? That's a- this is a tragedy. This is terrible. No one pushed the deer in. The funniest thing is, is misidentifying it as a dolphin. Elon wasn't even laughing at that, right? He was just laughing at the dead deer. <laughs> You know, what? Is that actually that actually happened? I th- of course it happened. I think I think this is a reflection of how there's like roadkill or something, and people will attach like get well soon balloons. To oh the- my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually so fucked. That's great. I didn't even know that was a thing. What is that like a common thing or something? I mean, like Oliver, if you went to the zoo and uh, threw your cigarette into a pile of hay, and I stopped smoking. Okay, imagine that this happened a year ago. You know, so if you threw a cigarette and you caused uh, a fire in the zoo and all the animals were burning alive in their cages, would you like be laughing all night long, or would you feel terrible about that? One cigarette burnt down an entire zoo. Nobody noticed. I don't know. I mean, (laughs) like, uh, hey, hey, let's not bring reality into the conversation now. This is, a, this is actually a Silence of the Lambs question. So, so you hear sheep burning alive in their pens. You're not traumatized by it? Are you chuckling? I mean, like, I think you're Hannibal Lecter in this. Who, who sheds a tear when they see, like, a drowned fly in a cup of water? No one gives a shit. Well, that's a bit of a step. <laughs> you know, that's another extreme. No one cares. Yeah, it's an extreme it. example. It's an extreme example. Okay, so, like, I don't know, a dead gecko. If someone sees, like, a dead gecko... Are you going to shed a tear for that? No. I just like this image of uh, Colossal as Hannibal, like, prank calling the person who had the uh, deer, who had the fawn drown in their pool, and he's just like, Clarice, has your dolphin started working again? (laughs) Or whatever. (laughs) Is your dolphin still broken? The dead baby deer, if it is a baby deer, is quite funny because of Elon Musk's reaction to it. Right. Oh, yeah, his reaction is funny, because it's like, what the hell? <laughs> why is he It's funny, so, it's funny. And I, I, funny? Thought of, I thought back to that reaction, and it's funny. I did think that was noteworthy, and I guess you could say funny, because it was unexpected, but this is supposedly, like, one of our best guys who's planning the future of humanity. He's trying to make uh, human beings a multi-planet species where we're backing up humanity on other planets, and, like, if he thinks that a fawn drowning in a pool, like he thinks like psychopathic things are funny. Just because you find like edgy stuff like that funny does not make you a fucking psychopath. That's true. It's, it's just a weird little warning sign. Like, no, you know, it's like, not. It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. There's nothing to that. I think if he laughed at it dying or like, you know, of it being killed, then it would be I think would be a sign. If it's a video of a man butchering an elk in a, in, a, in a slaughterhouse, then yeah, okay, if he's laughing at that, that's a bit weird. Yeah, that's all I'd say is it's a bit weird. That's about as far as I'd go with it. So like Bill Gates does want there to be less people. This is a bit scary. We go from less than a billion in 1800, and then three, four, five, six, and 7.4 billion where we are today is happening even faster. So Melinda and I wondered whether providing new medicines and keeping children alive, would that create more of a population problem? If he's making jokes about speeding that up or doing it on purpose, that's something that is just making people concerned because it's now it's no longer like this sort of altruistic, academic, purely trustworthy kind of instinct. And maybe it's like, maybe he wants me dead. Maybe he doesn't want me to have kids. Maybe he doesn't What's his number for how many people are okay? Elon and Bill Gates 
on climate change have some overlap, but they have a little bit of difference. So Elon, both of them are concerned with climate change and they think that uh, human beings are causing it. Elon says that the, that it basically it's an energy problem, that we're releasing all of the carbon that was stored, you know, underground into the atmosphere and that that's a radical experiment that we should slow down and stop. So he sees it as an energy problem. Bill Gates sees it as a people problem. So his equation, people times services, energy is part of what people consume in order to create services. So his priority, and you hear him say it. When our foundation first started up, it was focused on reproductive health. That was the main thing we did because I thought, you know, population growth in poor countries is the biggest problem they face. You've got to help mothers who want to limit family size have the tools and education to do that. And I thought that's the only thing that really counts. And then everyone goes, oh, wow, really? And they, you know, they kind of follow along the train of thought of like, that is counterintuitive. You know, people in abject poverty with terrible medical services will have more kids than in wealthy nations where they can trust that their kids are going to survive. There probably are some other factors, things like people needing their kids to help them make money and run a farm, things like that. But Bill Gates, starts the premise with if you want to depopulate the world so it's like he's saying it himself and elon musk says have kids have more kids where the population is in decline which is true uh, we actually have locked in in the united states and in china and in other nations we have a population decline we will have less people in the coming years than we do today to people who uh, think that there's a globalist plan to depopulate the world, which, by the way, that's Alex Jones's main thesis. Alex Jones says he knows how they plan to depopulate. They want a planetary dictatorship so they can carry out their forced depopulation agenda, and they want to do it through the medical system, not just in the United States, but worldwide under the UN and the World Health Organization. Who's behind all this? To uh, arrest climate change or reverse it, First of all, you've got to stabilize the population and, and hopefully reduce the population by having a voluntary one-child family for 100 years, get the population back down to where Paul Ehrlich said it should be. It was about two, two and a half billion people. But Alex Jones sees depopulation as a bad thing, and Elon Musk does as well. There are not enough people. I can't emphasize this enough. There are not enough people. I think one of the biggest risks to civilization is the low birth rate uh, uh, and the rapidly declining birth rate. As countries get, get wealthier, their birth rates plummet. It's, it's somewhat counterintuitive because people will say like, well, it's too expensive to have a baby. Nope. The wealthier they are, the fewer kids you have. A lot of people just think that having kids is somehow bad for the environment. I want to be clear, it's not. It's essential for maintaining civilization that we at least maintain our numbers. We don't necessarily need to grow. So Bill Gates, less people. Elon Musk, more people. So they're not in agreement about the solution to carbon emissions. You guys should all have kids. <laughs> kids are great. Number two, on crypto, they disagree. Elon famously likes Doge and Bitcoin, and he's interested in digital currencies. He says he's going to bring Doge to the moon or to Mars. And Bill Gates, he says that it's sort of greater fool theory that somebody's going to pay more for it than I do. Uh, and where it has at its heart sort of this anonymity that you know, you avoid taxation or any sort of, you know, government rules about kidnapping fees or things. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm not involved in that. The greater fool theory that there's no value to it unless you're uh, convincing more people to join the network and that there's no, that it's like fake money or whatever. He's not interested. Can't you say that about all money though, to be fair? Yeah. And you could say that about social security you could say that about the value of like the video game that you want to trade in. It's like, does someone else value this? Does someone else want to come after me? I mean, people are very sensitive to the idea of a Ponzi scheme lately, but I think what they're really becoming sensitive to are incentives. And what crypto taught everybody a pretty big lesson about recently is that we need to be more clear on what people's incentives are. If someone is telling you that this is a great investment, you should buy it they should tell you that they also own it and you shouldn't have to like find that out or not know that they were paid to say it. I am a paid spokesperson. How much were you paid? Total deal was just under $15 million. This kind of thing happens even where money is not involved. People who have become personally invested in Pyrocynical and have told all their friends, Pyro's funny, you should watch his channel or whatever. If something bad happens with Pyro, 
because their reputation is now on the line, they're going to be like defending him. They're going to be more apt to defend him because they want to be right about Pyro's good. So it's not it's not unique to crypto. It's just kind of like a it's a human nature thing of like when you uh, when you can benefit from something, you will convince people to help you benefit from it or, or you will try to be right about something you've staked your reputation on. So Bill Gates, he sees that as his objection to it. But honestly, that's the same thing is happening in the stock market. And that's, you know, that was exposed by the Wall Street bets. All it tells me is that people are willing to buy just about anything. If people are willing to buy like a Gamer Girl's piss. During the Belle Delphine thing, she was selling the Gamer Girl bathwater, right? Someone else started another account pretending to be her saying that they were selling piss for like double the price they'd only accept it in like fucking bitcoin or something so everyone was like uh, it could be fake it's not a new concept i remember when they were selling the nails that jesus christ was crucified on the nails that drove him into the cross oh i thought you meant nails like the toenails or something not like the actual nails the passion of the christ happened that movie by mel gibson and then they were selling the fucking nails from the movie the Passion of the Christ crucifixion nail sold $1,250. I, I genuinely absurd. thought that would have sold for so much more. Because you get movie... I, I mean, I remember when, uh, for charity, uh, Breaking yeah, Bad and Better Call Saul. They, yeah, they were, they were selling all the stuff from all the props in that show, like, like uh, Jimmy's suit, that glass You didn't end of, up getting uh, anything, did you? Nah, nah, it, it, it was all like tens of thousands, like, no way. That's so expensive. I was really surprised. Number two, no, number three, we did crypto. Oh, still, right. there's fucking more yeah, of this? Yeah, a couple more, just a couple more. All right, so on free speech, obviously Elon's a pro free speech. I mean, he started off as like a free speech absolutist, I think he even said, and now, now that he's taking over the platform, he's slowly kind of like... Uh, drawing in the fence a little bit and, and limiting what kind of speech and what you can say. And now he's saying that if you say negative things, it'll be max deboosted were his words. Whereas Bill Gates, very pro censorship of speech if it contains misinformation about what he's doing. He's uh, proposed a 3000 employee team to police misinformation on vaccines. And he's admitted that he has a staff of people who are looking out for what people are saying wrong about him and, uh, and trying to either suppress it, deboost it, or I guess just appraise him of, of what people are saying about him. I think some of the organizations that he's involved in have, have admitted lately that they're uh, collaborating with the platforms to suppress uh, misinformation. So now in the fact-checked articles that I was looking at about how many trips on Epstein's plane he'd taken, the links to the sources of these claims so like the the misinformation was gone so i think it was like three out of the four links i clicked had been deleted so he has been good at at uh policing misinformation about himself at least to some degree his team seems to have collaborated with google to to get the results uh front and center that he would rather people be reading that's just him furthering his own interest though to be fair that's pretty selfish on intellectual property, they have differing views. Elon Musk gave away the patents to Tesla because the wider goal of having more companies joining in and normalizing battery-powered cars was in line with reducing the carbon emissions on the planet. So he gave it away. He, you know, he obviously wants to make the best version of that car, but he wanted Ford to do it, BMW to do it, and uh, and gave away critical patents to that. So he. Tesla patents them so that they own it, so that no one else patents it and then charges them for a license. But they patent it and then they allow anyone to use it if it's being done in good faith. They don't pursue lawsuits against people using their patents. Bill Gates, on the other hand, is very against generic uh, use of his patented vaccines. So, all right, so if the goal is to get the entire planet vaccinated, then the best way to do that, especially in these poorer countries, is to just open source the patent and allow every poor country to produce it locally. And he said no, like he, he vetoed and came out against that. And uh, that was something that a lot of people thought was pretty sinister because it seemed profit driven. Now, his explanation was that it was a quality control thing, that you don't want uh, vaccines to be made in like unsafe labs or whatever. I don't think that uh, I don't think that entirely holds water, especially considering the poor quality controls there were on the vaccines, even in wealthy nations. Like there was a lot that was spoiled, or there were uh, dangerous vaccines that weren't kept at the proper temperature. There were things that made people sick, so it, that didn't work perfectly. There were a lot of um, 
and like poor standards or whatever. But so he's very he's very jealously guards his patents um, and did so as well with uh, when he was working at Microsoft with with Windows operating system. In fact, uh, Microsoft got charged for monopolistic practices and and for forcing forcing uh, PC manufacturers to carry their bloatware or whatever. So he, he's big into licensing and not to, uh, you know, free open source stuff. So there's a difference on intellectual property. You should just give an Xbox to everyone in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Instead of a PlayStation, it's an Xbox. Colossal's onto something here. Problem solved. I think you're right. I think that, I think that is reducing the population. Everyone does the joke about the PlayStation having no games, and it kind of everyone being the, you. No, no, he's right though. It has no fucking games. Hello. God of War Ragnarok came out recently, and no, it's no, just but it'll shit. come out on PC eventually. Yeah, probably yeah, in the next two years. But who gives years. a fuck? If anyways, you wait five years. it will come out on PC eventually. Yeah, but nobody wants to wait that long anyway because it's not that good of a game. I mean, like the combat is good. The combat's pretty good. I mean, the best it's ever been. But there's this one section where you ride like a fucking what is it? It's like an ox. It's like a yak thing. A yak, it's a fucking yak. And you ride this yak for like 40 minutes straight picking up apples. It's literally a fetch <laughs> quest where you have to get apples on the back of a yak. And there's this stupid little mocker girl who's like screeching at the top of her lungs to summon this yak. And it's the most insufferable fucking voice I've ever heard. And they just ruined it. They've added all these fucking characters in their shit. Uh, this is a spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played the game, but don't play it because it's pretty shit anyway. But like <laughs> one of the good. dwarfs play like- it. It's it's fine. The dwarf it's goes. It's, it's not that good. So the dwarf. One of the dwarfs goes insane for no reason because like his brother, the blue brother, I mean, dies. I think there's a like very that. good fucking reason insane. there. Whereas and then his the eyes only go red. person he hangs out with dies. I think that's a good exa- good reason to go insane. The pointless characters. There's this insufferable dwarf character with a southern drawl. Oh accent. no, she is the one. I only thing I agreed on you was that she was. I hated her. All right. What about what about fat? Thor's daughter. What about her with the fat ass? What? She's teenage. She's a teenage woman, and she's like her dad's neglecting her. She's gonna be whiny. I'd, and then you're like, yeah, she sucks. So you're like trying to solve this puzzle. You're trying to solve this puzzle. It's like it's not a hard puzzle. It's like anyone can work this out. And then suddenly the little shit chimes in with, right? You got to do this, Kratos. You got to do this, father. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking doing it. I'm fucking doing it. Yeah, it's not even a hint, is it? They will just walk you through it. Sometimes it's a hint, but sometimes it's straight up just like, hey, you should throw your axe at that thing. It's like, okay. It's literally been five seconds. Let me, like, breathe. No, <laughs> I've got to throw the whole game out now. Zero out of ten. No. I've, I've pretty much wrapped off all, all the points of the little exercises, but um, there were just, like, two last things I, I guess I wanted to say. In looking up the, um, the fact-checking, the misinformation about Bill Gates and, and looking at all the, the Reuters fact-checks and, and trying to look into it even myself to see if uh, those could be trusted, a lot of it, as you'd expect, is bullshit. Like, there was, there's this... Uh, w- widely spread theory that Bill Gates and Microsoft have patent number 666 and it involves this uh, this chemical called Lucifer that rewrites your DNA and um, that it forces you to get the mark of the beast where a vaccine is tattooed into your hand or something. And it's uh, that's conflated bullshit. There's a tiny aspect of truth to it. Microsoft does have patent number like 060606 or whatever which is quite a weird coincidence, but that patent doesn't involve anything to do with like vaccines or the mark of the beast. It's, it's something about a um, like wearable tech that would allow you to earn cryptocurrency by like exercising during a video game. So it's like some sort of like, kind of like a Wii controller where if you're running in place, you get crypto or something. It's not as, uh, it's not as frightening. It has nothing to do with vaccines. What I did find surprising was that um, he did basically co-invent or he sparked the idea for a microchip where you could turn off or on your birth control by remote control. That's right. Yeah, I was reading that. Yeah, that, and that's, that's true. In 2014, so this is on MIT's, and there's a Gizmodo article talking about it. He went to MIT and he talked to, to a, um, I don't know, one of the leading professors there and, and said, is there a way that you could implant birth control and then turn it off and on? The professor's like, oh, well, that actually there is a patent I already have for that. And we, we did the microchip. You basically, it squeezes out a little bit of this uh, hormone that, you know, causes the egg to not attach to the walls of the uterus. So Bill Gates was like, oh, well, can you just basically build my thing? And he gave him $20 million to build it out. So that's pretty weird. So Bill Gates invented remote control, birth control, and it was a microchip. So when you hear people saying like, oh, he's going to put microchips in the vaccines and it's going to depopulate the planet and cause sterility, 
and people ask him about that and he says where are the microchips coming from i don't know what you're talking about he should know what they're talking about because he was involved in a microchip that was related to birth control now was it put in the vaccines there's no evidence of that that seems um not like uh anything that there's any actual basis on that hasn't been detected by anybody credible so that's false but it didn't come out of nowhere so it's one of those things where it made people uncomfortable they remembered it and so when he moved into an area where you know he could get his way people were like wait a minute didn't you want to have people not have so many kids anyway um so that's where the microchips came from and he should know why they're bringing that up one other thing as far as the uh there's a lot of debunking of the bill gates did not take 17 trips to epstein's island the the press really latched on to that piece of misinformation and that it wasn't that many and the, the wording is kind of curious it wasn't that he never went to epstein's island they don't debunk that they just say he didn't go there 17 times but he did ride on his plane once, so that is kind of a partially true, but it gets a full false from fact checkers. But one of the reasons that Bill Gates is so strongly tied to Epstein and the curiosity around his death, now this is true, is that two days before Epstein died, he named Bill Gates's personal advisor as the executor to his will. And this is something that was taken as like a some sort of signal or a gotcha. Uh, supposedly someone who was with Bill Gates when he found out about this, they said Bill Gates fainted. And the, uh, the guy in question, Boris, this Boris guy, the advisor who was named as the executor to Epstein's will, he was surprised by it. And he said he had no intention of fulfilling the obligation. And uh, he doesn't know why he did it. But um, that's pretty odd. This was basically like his... Um, you know, his number one, like, healthcare science advisor very worked very closely with Bill Gates for a long time, and Epstein put him in charge of distributing his assets were he to die, and then two days later he was killed in his cell. Kind of weird to faint. That feels like it was staged. Like, what, the way Bill tells it is that he had these dinners, he had a couple dinners with Epstein where it was under the, the premise of fundraising for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and that in the end, Epstein didn't end up uh, giving him any money or helping him get any donors. But what Epstein was telling people was that Bill was interested in investing in his stuff. And he actually got, uh, he got Bill Gates, he directed him to donate $2 million to MIT. So it seems like the money was going to flow in the other direction, or at least that's what Epstein was bragging about. And uh, he said that Bill said Bill was, was interested in investing in his, his own eugenics program, which if you ever heard the details of it, it was truly bizarre. He wanted to basically set up a sex farm for himself where uh, he would just be knocking up these women and they would all be having his kids. And he said Bill Gates wanted to invest in that. So, But people who overheard their conversations said that, um, that Gates was confiding in him about being unhappy in his marriage and, and asking for advice on what to do. And Epstein told him to get divorced. So people who were close to Epstein, who, so basically like people who were probably serving them or personal assistants leaked out that Gates was complaining openly about Melinda at Epstein's house and, and sort of used his place as a, as a respite from his marriage. Come over to my island. Forget about your wife. I've got plenty of young girls for you. You know, it was also widely reported that Bill had a, a friendship or business or some kind of contact with Jeffrey Epstein and that you were not, uh, that that was very upsetting to you. Did that play a role in the, in the divorce at all in this process? Yeah, as I said, it's not one thing. It was many things. Bill did write an email saying that Epstein's life was rather intriguing but it uh, didn't seem like it was right for him. What he meant by that, uh, he was later asked, and he said, oh, I meant the decor. Yeah, like literally how the house was decorated, yeah. Well, so, okay, so uh, after going through the, uh, the differences between Bill and Elon and uh, the stupid things that they've done in recent years and this past week, like, where do you guys land on those guys? How do you feel about uh, either one of them? If you want to solve like the energy crisis and power your little cars, I know of a thunderstorm in Chile <laughs> or Argentina. Oh uh, God. So get all those kids playing Xbox in pajamas, rubbing their legs together, getting a static charge, and then um, one of them holds a pole in the middle and zaps up the battery. Why are you talking about kids rubbing their pajama bottoms with a pole? That's how you get static them? going. Like what the fuck? 
That's something like Jeffrey Epstein would ask them to do. <laughs> oh, oh, did I suddenly make an inappropriate joke about kids after your 10th one? Yeah, after Colossal makes a fucking Bible of them. Nerd, how dare you? They were slaughtering the spring lambs. And they were screaming.